Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, The Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. <laughs> the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones. All gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to The Men's Room. Wow! And away we go! Welcome to Season 16, Episode number 3,545. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill, The Ted Smith, Woo! and Mike Hawk. Montgomery! And you are in the men's room. Well, today, Castle joins us from his basement, studio, dungeon, bar, and once again, we will sit and spin. Today, we get the revised list of the Rolling Stones' 10 greatest songs of all times. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, the men's room, shout of the day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click clack. Drink it drunk. All right, here we go. A, uh, a man locked up in South Carolina jail misses out on a luxurious hair modeling career. Meanwhile, a Michigan lawmaker tells another one he hopes her car explodes and she's in it, as it's been that kind of year. Meanwhile, a man busted by tracking device after robbing kindergarten of laptop, pasta, and fish sticks. In Mother Russia, political candidates changed their name to an actual officials for giggles and for kicks. And police find a prosthetic leg thief with a man's leg. Strapped on top of his head. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. All that bitches, good day to you and yours. All right, imagine facing up to seven years in prison and $50,000 bond. What is your crime? That's right, a 43-cent theft. Might sound ridiculous, but that's the case for a man in Pennsylvania who was 43 cents short for a 20-ounce Mountain Dew, but he walked out with it. Meanwhile, a man in Australia, he's also facing seven years in prison. Now, he was not short on cash. No, he escaped from prison 30 years ago. And authorities didn't even catch him. He turned himself in. Yet somehow, in spite of being gone for 30 years, he faces the same sentence as a man that was 43 cents short for a Mountain Dew. Whatever. But it should be noted that the Australian guy's original crime, he was selling drugs. And that still only got him three and a half years sentence. Whatever. There's all kinds of crimes committed out there. There's a guy in Wisconsin. He was arrested, essentially, for aggressively offering hugs outside of a local restaurant. And in Oklahoma, a man was arrested for armed robbery. Which is ironic, because this armed robber stole a prosthetic leg. And police knew that they caught the right guy, because as Miles said, he had the victim's leg strapped to his head. And we would tell you why he had the leg strapped to his head, but frankly... We honestly do not know, other than the fact that the guy's goddamn crazy. But that said, we don't know why a lot of people commit the crimes they do. But all of us, intentionally or not, we've broken the law. Sometimes you broke the law, you didn't even know that it was a law to be broken. 
Other times, you knew damn well you were breaking the law. And that's what today's question is. Men's room fill in the blank style. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? Be a part of the big show. Call 206-421-ROCK. Like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at KISW.com. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer with Memorial Day values at Lowe's. Choose four or more eligible Samsung appliances to complete your dream kitchen and laundry room. Plus, get 10% back via MasterCard gift card rebate. Also, save now on the latest Samsung appliances, like the bespoke refrigerator with panels in a variety of colors to mix and match. It's an easy way to create your own unique look. Memorial Day values start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Offer ends June 13th. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com or contact your local agent today. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Holy Jones and away we go. Welcome to season 16, episode number 3,545. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeats. Ryan Castle will join us uh, from his basement studio dungeon bar. Once again, we will sit and spin. Uh, today we get a, a revised list of the Rolling Stones' 10 Greatest Songs of All Time. Oh, Rolling, revised, thank Rolling God. Stone Magazine, not the Rolling Stones' 10 Greatest Songs of All Time. I don't want you to think that. These are a Rolling Stone Magazine back in 2004. They came out with a list of the 500 Greatest Songs of All Time, and they have revised that list uh, since then. 17 years. 17 years. What are they, like on a weird cicada thing? Some things have changed. Uh, some uh, songs have uh, left the 500. Some have uh, jumped right back in. This is like a Labor Day weekend spectacular wrapped into one small segment. Except it's 500 songs. Yeah. It's not going to be Stairway or any of that. So, yeah. When do you start bitching about the list? No right? Freebird, no Stairway. No, one, no one's going to agree on 500 songs, but it, it, is it the top 50? Because. If you're at song number 495, I'm like, yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's why. Well, to like, their credit, for a list that big, it's tough. Like, I can't sit here and be like, they can't be in the top 50 because I don't have 50 songs. Right. You got 50. And, well, I got say 50. It, it's a weird argument to have with people. That's why generally it's like top 10, top 5. Well, that's what I'm saying. What's the point that you can start having an argument about whether they're right or wrong without being a complete jackass? If you're like on song 350, you're like, no way. Like, come on. Man. Well, you look at the songs that are ahead of you, and that's when you, know you start getting yeah. up. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It's like when they come out with a list of like, you know, the 50 greatest guitar players of all time. You know, like a guitar magazine will do it, somebody else will do it. Like, and Jerry Cantrell, one of these things was like 36. Right. And the other one, he was like 25. You know what I mean? But it depends on the, but if they put like C.C. DeVille in right, front of you, you go, hey, that's not okay. Wait a minute. What's going on? Because we already know they're going to say Jimmy Page is number one, whether right. they believe he is or not. It's yeah. by law you must say How that. did that guy bump in front of you? You know what I mean? Like, where the hell is he at? How the hell that happened? Yeah, so we got uh, a Rolling Stones uh, magazine's list of the 10 greatest songs of all time on the way with Ryan Castle as we'll sit and spin. Also today, we have another chance for you to pick up those tickets uh, to see Ghost and Volbeat at Climate Pledge Arena. Now, what we've been asked to do is give you a separate time every day. 
and every day we will give you the secret word. Okay? Secret. It's got to be a different time every day. Well, it's supposed to be a different time every day, and then we're going to give you the word. And then, so what I thought of today was, look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you a time that you're not going to forget. So today at 420. Ooh, that's good thinking. We're going to give you the secret word, you see. And then you go to KISW.com. You'll enter that secret word mm-hmm. uh, into the website there, whatever the hell they got up. And you'll have a chance to win these tickets. Now, Miles, let's think it. Because today's 420 is different than 420 yesterday. Yeah, if you yeah, call totally. it 420 yesterday today, mm-hmm. you have no chance. But if you call it 420 today, yeah. see, I like what you did there. Right. So you, it's an easy number to remember, and we're going to do it today at 420. That way we'll give you... I cannot wait for tomorrow. The secret I word. I cannot wait for tomorrow. I've got can, it I pick the, out. can I pick the time tomorrow? I've got it all figured out for the entire week. I've already got it charted out. And sure? I know all the words. This is cr- why I corporate crunch, loves you. Yeah. I can crunch some numbers, Miles. We, I, I can there. find a different I'm one. I'm telling you, man. I know I know our audience. <laughs> this is going to work. I mean, people will remember to listen to 420. But you keep switching it up. It's going to be difficult to remember. So it's going to be 420. Yeah, yeah, man. No people that audience. know 420 are going to get confused. Well, they're going to be in a bad state of mind. So hopefully they will remember to go to KISW.com and put in the word there. Oh, also uh, coming up on the program today, as we give you more Men's Room, Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock, head on over to the Odyssey app for the Men's Room Happy Hour, episode number 38. Today we have the exciting return of Man vs. Beast and the return of the effing news. If you have not checked out the Men's Room Happy Hour yet, all you need to do is download the Odyssey app, search for the Men's Room, and then you'll see uh, the Men's Room Happy Hour basically channel. Which is on Mm -hmm. there. Now, there's nothing on there right now because it doesn't go live until we go on the air at 6. And we get to uh, play by a different set of rules, so to speak, than we do here on the KSW Airwaves. Uh, The FCC uh, doesn't have the same restrictions when we broadcast on the app. They have zero jurisdiction. (laughs) That is why. This is more of an R-rated version of the program. That's why we have the opportunity to bring you the effing news. And you wonder what the effing news is. There's a lot of news out there uh, that that contains the F word. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, everything. I mean, it's it, it's insane. Now, most of that does not get reported. Uh, At but, least not on broadcast. Right, exactly. But we can actually do uh, the stories with the effing news. So we got a bunch of stuff going on in the world of music, uh, a bunch of stuff going on in the world of entertainment, uh, football, etc. So mm-hmm. that's coming up with the return of the effing news. And today on our uh, men's room blank question, we're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, maybe you got in trouble with the law. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? Let's uh, Let's start with this one. As we head to Pennsylvania, uh, there are many stupid criminals, so the story goes, and there are stupid wrinkles in the criminal justice system. And the latter definitely applies here. A man in Pennsylvania, and i got to warn you, ladies, and I, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. If you ever meet the best-looking dude you've ever seen in your life, right? I mean, just a just exactly what you're looking for. Whatever that guy is. That you His name is Thrill. Yes, okay? whatever, we know. Whatever you're seeing, whatever. And if he is from Pennsylvania, just know if you marry this guy, all right, you are going to have the worst last name in the world. Oh, from Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania Absolutely. Pennsylvania yeah, yeah. is the home yeah. of the worst last names in the world. You Especially either sound Western. like a mobster or you sound like... Like a like an idiot. You okay. Know? Well, it's 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 insane. That's and why I like Burris is up there. I don't trying know, to get it normal. I don't know what the hell's going on in Pennsylvania with the names. Basically, give him a tax break. Yeah, I, I'm not even kidding, man. If you it, Miles is not joking. If you go to the state of Pennsylvania, all right? There's Philadelphia. It all sounds like mobsters. That's understood. A huge Italian population mm-hmm. there, right? But same what, with Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh, bah, but Pittsburgh starts getting some of the Polish in there more, too. More so, like Kabbalah is really big there, right? But in the middle of Pennsylvania, you're like, dear God, what mm-hmm. part of the world are your parents from? If you know anybody from Pennsylvania, just think what their last name is. Okay, so it's it's, it's ridiculous. So this <laughs> guy, Bramowski. This guy's name is Joseph Sabaluski. <laughs> All right, Sobaluski. S O B O L E W S K I. Joseph Sobaluski. He likes Sambuca. He is, uh, I'm thinking he's drinking White Claws. How hey. old is he? Uh, da, 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 da. I can't make fun of White Claws. I love crushing them. He does not say. Uh, they don't say. Uh, but uh, Joseph uh, Sabaluski, he's at a convenience store recently. This guy didn't do anything really wrong. But he didn't notice a sign advertising that the 20-ounce Mountain Dew bottles were two for $3. He grabbed one and threw $2 on the counter and then walked out. I have to admit that I had a Mountain Dew today for lunch. It was delicious. Apparently, you need to buy two to get the discount. He did not know that. See, a single bottle is two dollars and twenty nine cents, not a dollar fifty. If you get two, you know what I mean. It's it's three bucks. So he he shorted the store twenty nine cents plus tax. But he did not know this at the time. Again, he's thinking it's a buck fifty. He throws two right. bucks up there and walks keep the change or forty three cents total, whatever. So the store calls police. They track the guy down. Joseph Sobolewski 
was charged with a felony and was locked up on a $50,000 cash-only bond. He is facing the possibility of three to seven years in prison. It's a felony because this is his third theft charge, and the state has a three-strikes law. Well, his first conviction came more than a decade ago for stealing a tank of gas. And his second was in 2011 when he stole a $40 pair of shoes from Kmart. Now, man. Come on. I, I, if you're going to steal a pair of shoes, all right. Go to Nike Town. Nothing against Nike Town. I mean, what are you doing? But doing if I'm going to get arrested because I stole a pair of shoes, it's going to be the nicest ass pair of shoes that I could possibly put on my feet. Right. Well, right Joseph, but even you have a story about stealing a pair just because you needed them. Now, listen. I think I this was guy, dead broke. He, he was a those. step so up. Maybe so was I was, at, so I was at Value City. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working at Chi Chi's. What kind of shoes time. did you get? All right, I, I don't know, but so Value City was, I mean, you got limited options, all right? And uh, so they're all in the shoe boxes, so I just go to size 13, whatever they've got, that's what I've got to get. And at the time, size 13 was not as prevalent as it is now, so your options are real limited. Mm-hmm. So I went through like eight boxes, and they I remember one pair was a shiny pair of green patent leather dress shoes. Oh, I'm like, there's, God. right, not stealing those. So the pair I found. I don't even know what the brand name was. It, in fact, I don't think it was a brand name. It was just a pair of shoes made by, I'm sure, some child in an Asian country somewhere. But they looked cool, right? So they were white leather high tops. They had some green in them, whatever. It's late 80s, so it kind of worked. I have no money, so I got out of my greasy shoes from Chi-Chi's, put these on, and walked right up. Nice. That's what I'm saying. And it's amazing. Sometimes how you, you just got to steal no, a pair of shoes. Have you, have you ever looked at a pair of 13s, Fine. 13s in the box? It doesn't look like they should be for human uh, feet. That looks I like mean, a they, coffin. They look so big. You know what I mean? Like, I, some brands of shoes that I have are 13. But they, when you look at them, you're like, that ain't going to fit on my damn foot. I had a woman tell me that the, because uh, I brought, it was a pair of boots. So they were high, but I brought the box up, and it looks like you could put a piano in there. And so the price tag's on the shoes in the box. A woman opens the box, looks at me, goes, oh, baby, your shoes are longer than they are tall. But I, I know. Just, just ring them up, please. That's a weird insult. I don't even know if she's being insulting. That's why, I, that's why I go to the uh, Nordstrom rack, even when I'm looking at shoes, man. I'll go over to like that one little rack they have, like 15, 17s and stuff, and just look and see what the options are. Like, what? Who in the hell? And I'll pick one up like, God damn, look at the size of this thing. I went to high school to do the war in 19. A 19. Yeah. They had to be special order, this and yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they had to be special order. And I always say this every time I bring them up, and God rest his dad's soul, but... His dad was a tiny man. Oh, no. And one day we were like, because James was a big man. All right. Was, I mean, he he was had the height and weight, and we were like, so he had a friend, and we'd always say, what was James's mom like? She was a large woman. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Like, I don't know how that little man ever did it. <laughs> Happily. We head down under on the night of August 1st, 1992, 13 months into his three-and-a-half-year sentence for growing marijuana. Darko Doogie Desic what? escaped from the Grafton Correctional Center in New South Wales using tools including a hacksaw blade and bolt cutters. Despite an extensive search, authorities were never able to locate Doogie, and he remained a fugitive for the next 29 years. So imagine everyone's surprise when he turned up at a police station one day to turn himself in after all this time. Uh, the Yugoslavian-born fugitive had fled to Sydney's northern beaches where he worked as a builder and handyman in order to make ends meet. Because of his situation, he always kept to himself, never talked to anyone about his past, and walked everywhere he needed to get because he couldn't get a driver's license. He also reportedly never visited a doctor or a dentist in the last 29 years in order to avoid being recognized. As one of Australia's most famous fugitives, Doogie had reason to avoid raising attention. He was once featured on the popular TV series Australia's Most Wanted when a person thought they saw him north of Sydney. So he tried his best to keep a low profile. Well, unbeknownst to him, uh, Doogie's fugitive status ended 20 years after his escape. And even immigration officials gave up on trying to find the guy, eventually granting him basically residency in 2008. One of his biggest motivations for escaping prison was the fear of being deported to his native Yugoslavia. That's fair. And being punished for running away to avoid being drafted into the army. Because that's why he left in the first place. Well, if you know what was going on in that country at that time, it makes a lot of sense. Well, on Sunday morning, Doogie decided to hand himself in to the DY police station. And he was charged with escape from lawful custody and placed in jail without bail. Do you think he had to explain to them who he was and what... I'm just thinking, so after 29 years, right, the average cop that's working there probably was not a cop when you escape. So you walk in and you say, hey, I'm I'm Doogie House or whatever that guy's name is. And they're like, what can we do for you? I'm turning myself in. What For what? What did you do? 
I escaped from prison. When the hell did you escape from prison? Mm-hmm. 30 years ago. Sir, I'm 33. Yes. Are you sure? And then yeah. they probably had to go through the records like, you know, no one was even looking for your ass anymore, but okay. And the reason they turned himself in after three decades on the run, because he was rendered homeless by the pandemic and he was struggling to find work. Mm-hmm. He just could not find a job during the pandemic. I will also say this. What do you think out of all the countries in the world? That, uh, you know, a lot have legalized marijuana or drugs or whatever. Wouldn't you just assume, as far as marijuana goes, that they would be one of those countries that would say, look, if you've got a marijuana conviction or something like that, or you're in jail for that, uh, first of all, it's not that type of a crime anymore. Now, breaking out of a prison is definitely a crime. the problem. Yes. And keep in mind, he was only going to serve three and a half years. So when he went in, you know, he did 13 months of it. He had a little bit less than three years to go. But, yeah, by the time everyone loosened up about weed, I mean, honestly, if he did not turn himself in, no one would look for him. In fact, they started to go fund me for this guy for his legal Mm -hmm. cause. Everyone that knew him, they said, dude, he's known him for like 20 years. He's an awesome guy. He's great. He's nice. I mean, people, millionaires are stepping in to help us do that. Now we head a little east uh, into New Zealand where men were charged with breaking the uh, country's tough COVID-19 rules. Mike, uh, you brought this story to us yesterday in headlines. Under Auckland's strict level four lockdown, all restaurants, including takeaway services, remain closed. Police say the men, ages 23 and 30, had traveled from Hamilton, about 75 miles south of Auckland. A police spokesman told the BBC... The officers made the arrest after they noticed a suspicious-looking vehicle traveling on a gravel road on the outskirts of the city. Upon seeing the police, the vehicle did an immediate U-turn and sped off trying to evade police. So that was the fishy part of the deal. So the vehicle was searched and police located cash alongside an empty ounce bag and a large amount of takeaways. Police photos showed three buckets of chicken, (laughs) ten cups of coleslaw, a large package of fries and four large bags containing other KFC items. They also seized around $70,000 in cash. It is unclear whether the men intended to sell the food or if they hope to use it as a distraction, whatever. Uh, The pair's risky late-night food run means they now face heavy punishments under New Zealand's tough anti-COVID laws. Fines can reach up to about $4,000, and some offenders can even face prison sentences of up to six months. Now, the men are not the first Kiwis whose fast food cravings have landed them in trouble with authorities. Last week, a 20-year-old man was charged after he posted a video on TikTok showing him leaving Auckland and purchasing a large amount of food from McDonald's. From McDonald's. People are breaking the COVID area to go, so it would be the equivalent. To go get fast food. To go get fast food. It'd be like saying, or don't post it on social media, right. dummies. I mean, wow. it'd be, it, yeah. you look at states, if you look like countries, you say, like, look, if you could somehow sneak into Canada and fill your trunk up with Tim Hortons uh, and drive back, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? This is this is not cool. You're not allowed in that area. So uh, New Zealand does it in the same way. They, they've got, like, four different quadrants. And you basically right. have to stay in those quadrants until this whole thing. And it's done the same way. You got to stay like in your state. As far as the level right. goes, like certain people can go to certain other sure, areas. Sure, sure. But this is one that you just can't go into right now, especially if you're from the area that these guys were. So our question, uh, would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? 206-421-ROCK. I kind of respect it, though. I mean, I get it. You know but, what I mean? I mean, a lot of people, look, I mean, you saw the stats, right? People gained weight during lockdown. They drank mm-hmm. more during lockdown. So these people are just like, I've had it. We're Look, going to get if fat. They had KFC. If they had a yeah. KFC in Hamilton, this would not be necessary. I, there you go. Right? I mean, they would come back with something else. I mean, if you're going to make a fast food run, you, you would go get whatever else you can't get. I mean, that, but... Yeah, the $70,000 in cash raises questions. It does, but, but is it I'll, illegal? Right. Well... Definitely raises questions, but... I, I'm saying, like, maybe they weren't doing it. I don't know why they have 70 Gs. But maybe they were just fired up and were like, screw it. We're going to get this chicken. Mm-hmm. I think they're probably up to no good, but other than breaking the COVID protocol, I don't know they really committed a crime. Is ten cups yeah. of that, I thought I don't. I know I think in the if states, travel, there's a limit of how much cash you can have on. Yeah, it's ten. Well, the IRS flags you at about ten grand in cash if you buy if you buy anything over that. Uh, is the uh, ten cups of coleslaw is that excessive? No, I think no. I think no. KFC coleslaw is awesome. It's that very good. good. Because yeah, they have three uh, buckets of chicken than to ten cups and gravy. of coleslaw. Better than well, so I'm trying to do that ratio in my head. I got three buckets of chicken. And that's a substantial amount of chicken. Do I need ten? Col- I, I feel like maybe two coleslaw per like, bucket. I need like five or six. I think mashed potatoes and gravy. If I got three buckets, well, there's still three two buckets. bags of miscellaneous stuff, right? And they didn't say what, about, what was in there. Yeah, what about biscuits or rolls? You right, there's probably that. biscuits and in you there. Definitely need gravy. But the coleslaw could stay in the fridge too. Yeah, yeah. Joe, do you have a, do you have one of those mac and cheese people in your life? 
What do you mean? Like if you go to Azell's or whatever, like I always get their mashed potatoes and gravy because I think it's fantastic and roll. Oh, yeah. Mac and cheese there. Yeah, yeah but I, I've, I've got yeah, my kids like, no, nah, I'll just get the mac and cheese. Mac, yeah, mac and cheese, man. Come on. Get the mashed potatoes and gravy. No, I prefer the mac and cheese over the mashed potatoes. Really? Yeah. So you're a mac and cheese person. Mac and cheese. Yeah, I do See, know I'm, a guy. I'm a, I'm a mac, I, not that I don't like mac and cheese. I'm just saying in the option world of is it mashed potatoes and gravy or is it mac and cheese, I think I'm going mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, I'm perplexed. It it's depends a, on the place. It's a tough choice. I'm getting that damn coleslaw, though. I love KFC <laughs> coleslaw. Our question, men's room blank style. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? You are listening to the men's room. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer with Memorial Day values at Lowe's. Choose four or more eligible Samsung appliances to complete your dream kitchen and laundry room. Plus, get 10% back via MasterCard gift card rebate. Also, save now on the latest Samsung appliances, like the bespoke refrigerator with panels in a variety of colors to mix and match. It's an easy way to create your own unique look. Memorial Day values start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Offer ends June 13th. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners' or renters' coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com or contact your local agent today. 99.9 99.9 KISW. Yay! You're in the men's room. Four questions. Men's room blank style. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, Jess. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 So, uh, yeah, basically, um, this was some time ago before marijuana was legal in this state. Uh, my buddy and I were in downtown Renton and kind of, I don't know if you guys know, you know, the train tracks that go that run towards Boeing or, you know, go basically, yeah, the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe railroad okay. tracks, right? Yeah. We've, okay. we've hoboed there so, before. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there used to be a lot of hobos there. Um, I'm not quite sure now. I don't live in Renton anymore, but my buddy and I wanted to go smoke some weed, and we had some rattle cans, spray paint, and we were going to go smoke a bowl and then go down to the river, and we were going to go do some spray painting and whatnot. Mm. And so I, at the time, I was... Uh, I want to say I was 18. I know I was old enough to buy smoke, but yeah, I must have been 18 or I just got away with being able to buy smoke. Either way, my buddy was 21 and we had a couple of beers in my backpack along with these rattle cans. So we're hanging out, smoking our weed, and we're on these railroad tracks behind what used to be McClendon's. Oh, wait, no, I think it is still McClendon's. It is still McClendon's, yeah. It's right beside the railroad tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So we were like on the back end there. You know where that big brick building is? We were like right, 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 past, there, yeah. uh, right past where the horse statue is in the square. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we were like down in that uh, area of town, and my buddy and I, you know, we we're like sitting on our skateboards, mm-hmm. just like, okay. And he was like, hey, you may see one of those rattle cans. And <laughs> he took one of these spray paint cans and apparently there was like this big spider on what I'm assuming was a very expensive I think cedar fence but it was dividing the railroad tracks from what used to be the the um, the train depot there and so my buddy grabs this rattle can and he's spray painting this spider to this expensive fence. Looking back I feel like a real jerk um, for advocating or not advocating but for just 
you know, laughing about it, but uh, these two Renton police officers rolled up on their bicycles. They weren't in cars because we weren't on the road. We were on the railroad tracks. And so these police officers showed up. And so I'll just try to wrap it up. Basically what happened was my buddy got, uh, he got arrested. Well, sorry, he he was detained. They fingerprinted him. And because I was a minor, and thank goodness they didn't search my backpack because I would have been in a lot more trouble. But what they did do is pulled out a bunch of um, contractor size uh, garbage bags and they made me pick up all of the the disposed beer cans from all the homeless people and there was all kinds of nasty stuff and they gave me a citation. I was 86 from the railroad tracks. No way! You got kicked out of the railroad tracks. The hell gets kicked right. out. Right. 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 Oh, that's one of the. Oh, that's that's a, that's one of the <laughs> nicest places in all of Renton. Yeah. Yeah. It's right down by Burnett's, not too far away from the Melrose Grill. That had to be a, what are you gonna, what soul crushing. What are you do now? We forget yes. Ruben oh. Kino. Yeah. I guess that's why you had to move out of town. Yeah, yeah. man. You, hey, hey. What a you bummer. can't go back to the railroad tracks of Renton. Damn it. Don't let us catch you here again. It's like us getting canceled on Thursday night. Like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's just... Damn it. So well, a get lot there. of information. A lot of information. The train track has uh, got a lot of curves. Oh, yeah. But listen, I understand where that guy was coming from. I had another experience with another one of those big-ass goddamn spiders in my house. Again, they move real quick. They don't want to, I'm watching TV. Everyone's asleep. And I'm like, oh, no. No, 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 no. But now I can see where it's hiding. And clearly, it's looking at me because now I've made eyes with it. So it doesn't want to move. But I'm like, oh, crap, man. It's one of these things where, but I know if I get up to grab the shoe, which is nowhere near me, you're going to be gone. Mm-hmm. And I cannot have this because you were too large to be in my home. Luckily, there was a spray bottle of bleach nearby. Spider did not want. Yeah, Turns spider out, did. they don't like bleach to the face. Do you think spider, the spiders wonder why they're just, you know, so hated? You know what I mean? Like, do they walk around all the time like, you know why? I'm a pretty good looking guy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't bother anybody. Rarely do I bite people. I just crawl around minding my own business. Flies can fly around. Nobody kills them. You know what I mean? All these other bugs. You know why? Because flies are harder you know, to kill. Moths get taken outside and they don't get <laughs> smashed because they powder up the walls. I don't know, man. Moths inside the house still getting smashed. Yeah, they really? die. They die. Yeah. Not good That's my thing. It's just, in, it's spider season. There's a spider spinning a f- magnificent web outside of my place. That's fine. I won't mess with them. Okay. Yeah, right. They can do his thing. But once he enters That's it. my yeah. home. You can't be in my so house. No shirt, no shoes, no spiders. <laughs> right. No service. I'm just saying if a random dude walked through my back door, like he's getting sprayed or something too, yeah. or hit he with a spray of a bleach, sure. Yeah. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? 206-421-ROCK. Hello, John. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how you guys doing? Hola. 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 Okay, so my recreational activities landed me in living in a motorhome. And uh, I parked in front of this bar in the parking lot. And uh, my battery died, and the cops came, and they were like, Hey, uh, you got an hour to get this thing out of here, or we're impounding it. And I was like, Oh, okay, well, I just need a jump. So I started walking around with jumper cables trying to get people to give me a jump. It's like six. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. Here are the seven words. I wonder how you ended up in a motorhome in front of a bar. I believe it. Sucker. Mother. And. Please keep those words in mind when calling. Now back to the program. <laughs> so from Mike's reaction, you can tell us, he told that story the exact same way to Mike. And Mike said, do not say that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just F you works. We get it. Maybe on the happy hour. Would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble uh, with the law for doing blind? 206 421 Rock. Jesus. I hate to admit it. I was a little, I was like, where's this story going? I know where it's going. What did he say? His extracurricular activities landed him in a trailer park. Yeah, landed him in the trailer. Motorhome. 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 In front of a bar. Yeah. Huh. Hello, Chris. Welcome to the men's room. Areola. Hola. 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 Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys, love you guys, love you guys. Moved up here to Pacific Northwest and found you guys, and I can't stop. Nice, man. Where'd you move from? Uh, originally from South Carolina. Okay. Uh, come here from Alabama, Tennessee, Nashville, all, all over. The, all oh, the it's just like being at home. All the yeah. hot spots. Yeah, all the hot spots, man. I bet you missed a good, so, a good uh, biscuit. <laughs> so uh, this one comes out of Nashville. I've got quite a few. 
but uh, out of north of Nashville. So I was going through a real crappy divorce, like they're all good. Yeah, say, as opposed yeah, to those awesome right. ones that people are so happy about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so we, uh, I had a mother-in-law turn a garage out back, a two-car garage into a mother-in-law suite. And I was actually, we, when we separated, I was staying in it, you know, getting everything situated. <clears throat> well, in the south, they'll have like a local dump. Uh, where they have a lot of big green dumpsters where everybody that don't pay to have trash picked up, they just take it and throw it in. All right. Well, the, they in, in that town, they had had one forever, but, you know, the town's cleaning up, and they don't want this stuff, you know, around. So they sent out notices everywhere. So I had, it told her months prior, this was even like a year prior, I was like, oh, look, hon, they they closing the dump. Oh, here's your divorce papers. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, long story short, I was using the bathroom in the house, taking a shower, worked crazy, crazy hours. And my dog was barking at somebody knocking at the door. I finally went to the door, and it was a sheriff and a local police officer. So they had found some, someone had taken some trash up to the dump whenever it wasn't a dump anymore. And uh, it had my mail in it. And uh, and it was her. Oh, and, she, uh, did. Oh, oh. she did it on purpose? Uh, well, I don't know that she necessarily did it on purpose. Uh, you know, looking back now, I'd say she probably did because she was that good of a wife. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, man, I, I really, if, if I was trying to bust you for something, that would, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't think that they would go through the trash. I mean, maybe they so, do, but, but you know what I mean? Well, like, so the, 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 I even asked, all right, so it was, this was the, the insanity of it. So I, I answered the door in a towel and, and it was two police officers and, I, and the funny thing is I actually had my toenails painted I'm a father of three daughters <laughs> <laughs> and they, they just, I mean I invited them in I was like uh, guys can we I, I, I thought it was a joke I really thought it was a joke at first and they were like we're, they were so apologetic they're like we don't even really feel like we need to be here doing this this is ridiculous we've been waiting on your truck to be at this you know residence and anyway, I said, let me, let me, let me put some clothes on real quick. Met him out in the living room, talked to him. I said, okay, so what do I have to do? They said, well, we're not taking you down. You just have to turn yourself in voluntarily. I took a fright, the next Friday, very next Friday off to go handle this. Hope, you know, to hope I could get this cleared, you know, that I had nothing to do with it. It was just a ridiculous thing. I'll pay whatever, anything. I sit down there, I take the day off works, go down there at eight in the morning, sit down there till six in the evening. Jesus. And they, st I'm sitting in the, in the room where they process everything. They're bringing in new prisoners. Even the phones with the glass walls are there mm -hmm. and they won't process me. And I'm there voluntarily trying to get, I even, I looked at the, the little uh, girl police officer and said, Hey, if I punch you in the mouth, will you process me? <laughs> Cause I, I've already taken the day off and all of this. Anyway, left, come back the next Friday, sat there the whole time, another five, six hours. Whenever they finally got me back and booked me, they, they, they took my mug shots. I didn't like the first one because it didn't show my best side. I actually got to take it again. <laughs> nice. Then they just they walked me right out the, the front door, and, and, and I've never heard anything about it again. A year later, I, I say I never heard it again. A year later, I was uh, doing a second job, you know, trying to co recoup some, you know, divorce funds. And um, <clears throat> went to work at a uh, liquor store. So you got to have an ABC license. And the owner was a police officer, but they run your, you know, when you get an ABC license, they run a, f a felony check. And I have a felonious littering charge. Oh, my God. You're kidding me. No, sir. So what, and, did, and, you, uh, did, I mean, did you pay a fine? Never and, and okay, so I'm going through another kind of thing right now. A DUI, imagine that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, that's not like you won't believe I was arrested. <laughs> no, that's I believe that. Yeah, you will, yeah, you will believe I was arrested for that. Trust me. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, anyway, uh, yeah. So whenever I'm, I'm talking, I'm dealing with my attorney now, and he says, "Is there anything else?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, by the way," and this was like nine years ago. And he looked at me like I had five heads. Um, I, I don't know. I, he was like, what? And I told him the same exact story. And he, what? And he never heard anything else. And I was like, I've, aside from that one employer, and he still hired me. He laughed it off and hired me. I worked for him for about a year. Um, 
But yeah, it, hey, well, look, man. If I'm going to run a background check on someone, right? Like I, I'm hiring, I run a background check. And one guy, he's bending out for theft. This Drew Grand Larceny, and you have felonious littering or jumping. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and hire your ass anyway. I think I'm okay yeah. taking the risk on you. Yeah, yeah. I, I worry now though if if someone riding in the truck with me and they flick out a cigarette butt, <laughs> I'll pull over and make them go pick it up. Oh, if it came out of the truck, you're in. Yeah. Yeah, trust me. I don't want him, you know, running my name and like, oh, oh yeah, look at you. Oh, you got a pattern oh, he's, he's, doing this, he's, you son of a bitch. He's yeah, uh huh. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. yeah, especially yeah, out I, here in the I'm West. That guy. Yeah, man. And look, I'm that's the one stuff, they're looking for. It never goes away. It doesn't. And I've told this before. My dad got busted speeding through the state of Oregon back in like 1986, maybe 1987. Either way, we lived on the East Coast at the time. So he told me I got pulled over. They gave him some huge ticket. And he's like, well, I'm not going to pay it. And, you know, as a kid, I'm looking at my dad, like, what are you talking about? He goes, man, when's the next time I'm going to drive through Oregon? Let's fast forward. They now live in Seattle. So it, is, it has happened since then. But when after they retired, so this uh, probably about 2008. Right? So he gets busted in 86. 2008, they moved to Texas. He has to renew his license when he gets there. Doesn't have to take a test or anything. He just turned it in. He has forgotten that he got the stick in Portland. Because, again, it's been that long. And it's a traffic violation. It's not like a real crime, right? So he said the woman behind the counter, and I guess she's a real no-nonsense, Southern-style woman. Like, uh, Mr. Hill, we have to have a conversation. You have to come here, honey. And he's like, what's up? Uh, now, I record show here that there's a mon- another man whose name is Robert Hill, and I can't imagine that it's you who has an outstanding speeding ticket violation in the state of Oregon from 1986. Like, that's what it says here, honey. Would that be you? So my father, <laughs> understanding, she knows it's him, but she doesn't care, but she has to bring it up. He's like... Yeah, I don't know anything about that. She's like, mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you don't, but I'm going to give you a little word of advice. You get pulled over here in the state of Texas, they ain't going to believe you, honey. You might want to deal with it. Now, the thing is, the state of Oregon apparently has not forgotten this. So when you add up with 25, 35 years of these tickets, it went from like maybe a $75 ticket to tens of thousands of dollars. So it's at the point now that if he gets pulled over, dude, he could be going 56. If they decide to pull his ass over, he's going to jail. He's going to jail? Yeah, because it's been that long, and you now owe, like, you owe them felony money now, right? And you yeah. chose not to pay this ticket, and in a lot of places, they'll forgive you after maybe 10 years. Oregon is not one of those places. So, I mean, they constantly, Dang. they update what he owes. So, yeah. when he, Does like, your mom drive if they go through Oregon? Now, I made this suggestion to them about two years ago. They decided they are going to do the Pacific Coast Highway and drive to see my uncle in, like, San Fran or something like that. And I pointed it out. I said, hey, man. Seriously, right before you get to the Oregon border, you and my, you have to switch places. Like, you, you have to. And he's like, I hate the way your mom drives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Seriously, no. he does. I'm going to take my chances. And, and the thing but is. He, but he likes your mom's cooking. He likes. <laughs> nobody likes my mom's <laughs> cooking. My mom doesn't even like my mom's cooking. If it ain't breakfast, you don't want to eat it. I mean, it's just it's that simple. When I was growing up, I'd said, you know, a restaurant, just like homemade. We're like, keep going. It's, <laughs> it's no Homemade tortoise. food. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. Okay. no. No, we don't want that. <laughs> Hamburger helper. Dude, I, my mom could cook, but there was a theory in my family for a while. Like, you know, you take road trips. Yeah. And I can't remember when my brother and my sister, one of them finally just said, we're not going to another place that says family style. <laughs> or like family, fr- like, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like those parts of Pennsylvania or oh, yeah. oh, yeah, Virginia, West yeah. Virginia, like th- those restaurants are just always the worst. Because they're weird. That's why people like Crackle Barrel so much. Because the food, <laughs> yeah. at least, is high yeah. good quality. And that's why. So I'm just saying. If I'm in Oregon, I'll recommend Elmer's. That's a good spot. <laughs> they got everything. You can get a hamburger at 9 a.m. Not that Ooh. I did that recently. Yeah, That's my kind of place. <laughs> oh, is that a truck stop? <laughs> Elmer's is, uh, they're kind of like, uh, oh, God. Sounds like a truck stop. Yeah, well, what's the uh, what's the local chain here? Sherry's. They're kind of oh. like a Sherry's, but they don't have, okay. they don't have right. as much pie, I guess. Oh, would you believe it if I told you I once got in trouble with the law for doing blank? 206-421-ROCK. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are.
This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. Kickstart summer with Memorial Day values at Lowe's. Choose four or more eligible Samsung appliances to complete your dream kitchen and laundry room. Plus, get 10% back via MasterCard gift card rebate. Also, save now on the latest Samsung appliances, like the bespoke refrigerator with panels in a variety of colors to mix and match. It's an easy way to create your own unique look. Memorial Day values start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Offer ends June 13th. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details.